No pink shorts today, but I got something better. How about an epic load of summer lures from Tackle Warehouse? We are gonna go through all of them. We're gonna talk about my summer fishing picks to get out and catch some bass, because what's better than that? Oh yeah, nothing. Welcome back to another edition of Garage Talk. In today's video, we are going to talk about some epic summer baits. I just pulled this huge haul from Tackle Warehouse. You guys can see it right here, ton of stuff. But before we do that, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. As I mentioned in the last video, YouTube has this great habit of unsubscribing people from the channel. I don't know if it's because they hate the outdoors or what it is, but make sure to go down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. But we need to talk summer fishing. So I want to tell you why I have all these, these wonderful summer baits right here. A lot of you guys that talk to me via direct messaging and you know shoot me emails, call me and that, you guys know I had to have surgery and I literally think it's because of fishing. So I had to have hernia surgery a couple weeks back and I have been on the DL list since then. And you know what that means, like literally tearing your hair out, wondering like what the fish are doing, I want to get out there and catch them, getting texts from your buddies going, dude, it's on, you got to get out here. So I'm almost back in play. I'm about to make my re-emergence, we'll call it, and get back in the mix. So I thought it'd be fitting to order a bunch of lures from Tackle Warehouse and kind of re-up on my summer sort of techniques, summer baits, and also to grab some stuff to try out. We're in summer here, and if you're not there, I promise you it's coming. It's right around the corner. It's like 85 degrees. It's beautiful. There's a lot of fish getting out deep, but there's still some fish in the grass as well. So what I tried to do is order a variety of baits that'll cover me both sort of in that sort of mid-depth range that they tend to stack up in, as well as deeper and out offshore. But without further ado, let's talk lures and let's talk the techniques that we're gonna use these lures for. You guys have been telling me to get one of these for I think the past two years. So I finally did. This is a dark sleeper. Um, it's from Mega Bass. Mega Bass, as you know, it's kind of a, it's not kind of, it is a Japanese company. So they make some unique baits and oftentimes they're sort of finesse or sort of subtle oriented. They work great in high on high pressured waters, high pressure situations. Probably their most well-known bait is that Mega Bass uh, 110, the jerk bait. Randy Blockett, an intuitive angler, talks about it a whole bunch. I think he helped to develop it. But the Dark Sleeper is kind of a cool deal. It's a swim bait, but it's weirder than any other swim bait that you've seen. And I actually got one out of the package right here, and I wanna show you kind of close up what it looks like. So you have an internal weight, first of all. You can see it right there, kind of through the plastic. Got sort of your, your 45 kind of line tie right there. Subtle little boot tail. This thing comes in at, I think, like three inches and change, maybe three and a half inches, not very big. The size that I actually got, this is a three quarter ounce. Um, I'm gonna use this to attack some very subtle lead fi ledge fish. Um, when they get out, they, they get super beat up, crankbaits, power fishing, but a swim bait is sort of one of those last kind of power fishing approaches you can use to sort of subtle your power fish, if you will, or finesse kind of power fish. And what's cool with this is oftentimes these fish kind of get around some cover, especially as summer progresses. This is actually a semi weedless bait. Watch this magic. Right behind there, embedded in that, that dorsal fin, is the hook. It's, it's a small hook, probably only like a two aught, three aught right there. But what it does is it allows you to put this bait through some cover. Now, I wouldn't throw it smack dab in the middle of a brush pile, but what you could do is sort of like tick it through. It gives you sort of a little bit of an insurance policy to get the bait through some stumps, maybe through some really clingy rock, or if you're throwing off of the ledge or off of some boulders, you're able to walk it up without hanging up as much. So the other one, and this one's kind of cool, because ledge fishing, and just fishing in general, especially when it comes to some of these pressured lakes, fishing offshore, is all about making different presentations. There's some classical baits, and we're gonna actually talk about a few, you know, crankbaits, swimbaits, things like that, that, that are normal, easy, kind of great applications, great techniques for, for attacking and getting catching some of these deeper fish but mixing it up ever so slightly, but using something that always works, maybe putting something, putting a bait deeper than it normally goes, is always a trick to kind of getting bigger bites or triggering a school where they just won't go with any other lure. So that's why I did it. I spent all that money on the jackhammer. So these are ungodly expensive. They, I'll be the first to admit, this is a Z-Man jackhammer, but it's not your average jackhammer. As you guys can see, I think it says on there, yep, right there. This is a 1.25 ounce jackhammer. 
super heavy, right? It's your traditional jackhammer, tungsten head on it, um, little small dark blade. What color did I get? Green pumpkin shad, you know, perfect. We got on the TVA, we got some green water. It makes the shad, makes their backs kind of like this, this emerald green kind of color. But what I think is so cool about this is, is the following. I've been catching a ton of fish on crankbaits. You, if you guys watched the last few videos, they've all been about crankbaits. Well, a chatterbait is literally a crankbait that works kind of upward, that sort of rises as you reel it instead of digging. So what I'm really excited about experimenting with, and I've done it a little, but never with a, a chatterbait that's heavy enough to stay down. I've done it with some one ounce chatterbaits, but this one and a quarter, and I know it seems like a lot of weight, but remember that the chatterbait, as you reel it, because that blade's going, it rises and creates, you know, sort of press against that blade and it rises. So with the one and a quarter, I'm gonna have to throw it on probably like a seven, two, seven, three, maybe even a seven, six flipping stick that has some parabolic action to it. But I can put like a little easy swimmer, like swim bait on here, something small and subtle, maybe even like a little fluke. That's actually kind of what I think I'm gonna start with. Um, and I can send this thing down and sort of slow reel it just like you would a swim bait down along that shell, down along that rock. And just like a chatterbait in grass, I can pop it, you know, and create that sort of darting sort of uh, hunting action. I think my buddy Jacob Wall always talks about it, that hunting action that you get from a chatterbait. And I don't think they see many of these down there. I know a few of the bass guys and MLF guys have been throwing them on the ledges. I've seen them like in the videos when you're watching the live stream. I've played around with it, but I've never really committed to it. So this is something I'm super excited about trying. One little quick note too, all of this stuff, if you're interested in checking it out, learning about the specs of the bait, whatever, what colors are available, I'm gonna put links to everything down in the description box at Tackle Warehouse, so you can go check it out. If you dig it, grab one. If it doesn't suit your needs, don't grab one. That's the way this game works. So let's get back to some of the fun stuff because I do have some new baits mixed in here or some new lures slash jigs that I picked up. And they're actually all related to swim baits. It's, it's all of these guys right here. And I wanna go through each one independently because there's reasons I got each one of these, very specific reasons in fact. So let's start with this guy because I've thrown this one quite a bit. Um, this is a spin tricks right here. I took it out. But what it is, is it's a combination of your classic swim bait jig head. It has a screw lock keeper right on there, just like the goat does. But you can see the obvious main difference, and that's this blade. It's basically a swim bait jig head incorporated into an underspin. This is in three quarter ounce. Um, I almost wish they made it a little bit heavier. I could have swore I got a one ounce, but I don't think they actually make it in a one ounce. But what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna fish it exactly how I'd fish my swim bait normally. I'm gonna tick the bottom, make that slow reel. But what's really fun with this is when I stroke that swim bait, with this going up, you get that blade report, but then you also get kind of a cool flutter as it goes down and this blade, fl blade flutters. I will be 100% honest and tell you that literally I've caught fish on a swim bait throwing this style of rig and tried to throw a naked one to them, just a standard swim bait on a jig, like a jig head, like a goat jig head or something like that, and they have not bit it. So there are times when that little bit of extra flash makes a huge amount of difference. And this is actually gonna relate kind of going into these next jig heads I'm gonna show you. One of the other cool things with this is Although the blade is not hugely extended down, one of the hardest things that we run into with a swim bait is knowing if you're fishing cover, if you're ticking that cover before you actually hang the bait. What this blade does, and it doesn't do it perfectly, don't get me wrong, but it does give you a little bit of report on what's under, and especially if you're fishing around wood or branches, you will feel them hit this blade before you feel them hit the hook. And usually, if you're very diligent about it and fishing pretty slow, you can make, kind of work this bait out of it before you sink in and you hook that big hook. These things are a little bit pricey for what they are, but you need to have some in your tackle box for summer. They make a big difference. They're great for catching suspended fish as well when you're actually riding that swim bait up a little ways. So let's move on to another thing. You guys know how much I like brush pile fishing and summer is one of the best times to do it. One of the things I've struggled with is sort of a subtle technique. I don't know what you'd call it, maybe like floating a swim bait, but basically what I'm doing is I'm using a swim bait to tick the tops of these brush piles or tick the tops of these trees. You do it a lot for spotted bass, but oftentimes you don't even need to tick the top of the tree. You can kind of just reel over it. But when it comes to the large mouth, it seems that contact with the brush is hugely important. But if you try that technique 
and I've done it a whole bunch, you hang a million swim baits. It's extremely frustrating, you end up losing a lot of line, and you lose a lot of baits and a lot of jig heads. So what I've been looking for is a swim bait jig head that provides me the same sort of specs as my goat, where it's sort of like a standard, but a little bit stouter hook. And it also provides that screw lock, but I get a brush guard as well. So what I found is these guys right here. These are screw lock swim bait heads. I'm gonna pop one out to show you. They're pretty cool looking. I think the same people that make these guys, the Blade Runner Tackle, are the ones that make um, my underspin thing. I don't even know what I did with it. Here we go. Yeah, they, they all make the same one. So basically what you have is a standard wire hook you have a brush guard right there, and then your screw-on keeper. And what that's going to allow me to do is take, say, one of Ryan's, like, bass, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I always forget the name of his swim baits, but, like, one of Salzman's swim baits, a hollow body, or I can take an easy, or some of these swim baits I'm going to show you in just a second. I can put them on there screw them on, I don't get any slippage because one of the things that you do when you tap the brush is you kind of almost like jig fishing, like if you were throwing a football head through it, you sort of pop it out and that, that sort of contact and then popping action creates a reaction and these jokers chew it. So I got them in half ounce, which is ideal for brush piles anywhere from like 10 to sort of, I'd say like about 20 feet. And then I did also get them in three quarter ounce. That's for stuff when you're going deep. That's when you're looking at like 30 foot, 35 foot, super deep. But it's a cool deal. I'm gonna try them out because even if I hang say 50% less, it's worth it. Because once you hang that jig head or that swim bait in the brush pile, I do think it disrupts the fish. It might not screw it up totally where you're not gonna get any more bites, but I do think you end up missing some of the bites that you're going to get and usually the big ones bite first so if you blow it on that first cast with that swim bait you're screwed so this gives you a little bit we kind of talk about it a lot in insurance policy just a little extra second you feel the brush you kind of work it out and and you get bit dude a uh, quick plug you guys actually asked me a lot um what line are you using Ideally, if I had the perfect life and all kinds of money to spend at Tackle Warehouse, I would be running Sunline Sniper on pretty much everything, but, but I don't roll that way, dude. This is blue collar fishing for the most part. So what I run is Seaguar Red label, label. I know you guys have critiqued it a lot, or I know there's a lot of guys that have some critiques for it. For any shortcoming that it has, the price point and the bulk school spools make up for it. This is 12 pound fluorocarbon. It's what I'm using on my hair jigs, my crankbaits, my magnet setup. Um, it's great to have a thousand yards. I only have to buy line like twice a year or something along those lines. You guys know I got a million fishing rods to spool up, but it's an awesome deal. That's what I'm using. Stretch is a little bit more than what you'd find on Sunline Sniper, but overall it, it's quality fluorocarbon at a stellar price. So you guys are wondering about the swim baits, right? All right, I'll tell you about the swim baits. So I'm a sucker for new style swim baits, little changes, subtle changes. You guys know how much I've really adopted the Kitek and the Finesse swim baits. Well, I got two buddies who are epic sticks on Lake Gunnersville. Justin Lynch, he actually works for Duckett. He's the, the rep for Duckett. And these are Duckett swim baits. So yes, that was bias telling me about them, but they work and they're killer. So my other buddy is Miles Murray. He's a god on Lake Gunnersville. And he told me about them too. And I have thrown them and they are cool. So what they are, and literally the name says it all. They're called Subtle Tail Swim Baits. Um, I got them in the bigger version. This is the six inch, what color is this? Cause it's cool. Tennessee Shad Special. Um, it's got kind of a nice little greenish smoke kind of look to it. Um, I want to pop one out real quick because the best way to sort of understand what these things do is to, um, to take a look at them. And literally the name is everything. So this is the bigger one. You will see that the shaft going down to the tail is super skinny and then it, it has that little fin to it. But for a, what is this, a six inch swim bait, look how small that tail is. It's a different shape too. It's not your standard circular boot tail. Um, it's more kind of, I guess you call it like a triangle or a diamond style tail. The tail is super subtle though. You know, it's not that beating kind of woo 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 that you get from most hollow bodies or most standard boot tail swim baits. I can tell you in the water too, it has this very soft sort of undulating action. And these fish see a lot of swim baits. So I think stuff like that makes a difference. It also has one of the features that I love about the Kitek. And I don't know if it makes a difference, but it sure makes me more confident. And with how many fish I've caught on a Kitek, it says something. Um, these ridges, 
Uh, so you can see, I don't know if it's, it's going to, yeah, it's going to translate in the camera. So you can see it's all ridged up. I think it creates a subtle vibration. Um, I don't know, but I know I get more bites, especially on pressured waters from swim baits that have these subtle ridges. Um, it does have a small hook guide right there, as well as if you want to rig it weedless, there's a, there's a hook guide right there. So when I'm rigging this thing up, I'll actually cut off the tip right there. And I do that just so my, my goat head or some of these weedless heads or the underspin head line up better with the body. You just get a better shape and size. The other thing to note with these that's kind of cool, so you see how the tail's triangular like that? So the entire body of this swim bait has that sort of triangular shape. It's just something that's a little bit different. Um, even though it is such a Mondo swim bait, I did notice that the action that it kind of puts out is fairly subtle. And I actually like that. Once again, subtle tail, you know, it speaks for itself. So I have this thing in the six inch right here. And then I also got it in the 4.5 inch, which you can see right here. It's just a little smaller finesse version of the exact same bait. I'll probably use that more when I'm thinking of using maybe a Kytec, like a three point, what is it? A 3.3 or something along those lines, 3.8. Um, it's just kind of a, a subtle replacement. It's a little bit more slender than that Kytec as well. So it just gives a little bit different presentation. Lastly, but not leastly, you can't talk summer fishing without talking about a little bit of finesse. So I stocked up on some of my Domeki stingers. As you guys know, on my Ned rigs or for Nico rigging, things along those lines where you're making a finesse worm presentation, it's a great way to clean up in summer. You don't always have to use big baits and having like a little small stick bait or finesse style bait to, uh, to clean up on some of those fish is hugely important. So I grabbed some stingers. These are the three inch version but have a Ned rig, have some kind of little worm. I like my stingers and my fat ace, but killer presentation. Summer is a fun time to fish. You can experiment with a whole array of baits like these. You can try a lot of different things. The fish are potted up, you catch a bunch, and you got a shot at catching some big. So I hope you're able to get out there because I know that I am finally making a comeback and I'm gonna get out there and do some fishing and it feels awesome because I've been cooped up in the house after this surgery and it's about time to bend the rod and slang a little bit. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button right down there. Support Real Fishing and definitely go check out JT's Garage Talk. He has his own unique perspective and years upon years of tournament experience to share with you. And he's a good dude, man. So support good people, support stuff that teaches you how to catch more and bigger fish. But Till the next video, hopefully an on the water fishing video. We will see you again. Tight lines till then. We are out for today's Garage Talk.